Hey, good morning or uh, good evening, folks. So, Mars opposition is coming up on October 13th. So, everyone is asking, how do I take a good picture of Mars? So, if you see on the left hand side, this is the live video that I captured of planet Mars. And this is the stacked image of Mars, right? So, folks are asking, how do I get from here to here, right? It is a two minute video when I captured it. And I captured in the raw 8 format in the SharpCap. SharpCap is the live imaging software I used. I used the Celestron 14 Edge HD telescope. And I used a Teleview PowerMate 2X, which is like a Barlow, which multiplies the telescope focal length twice. And then I used a ZWO ADC, which is a uh, atmospheric uh, distortion character or dispersion character, whichever way you call it. And those, that's my setup. And I used a planetary camera, which is the ZWO ASI 290MC. So, and I used a PhD for guiding, like I was guiding on a corner star near the field of view uh, in my guide camera on the top that you can see uh, in the back of my uh, background. So, how do I get from here to here? Right, that's what I think everybody is interested in, right? So you take the soft, you take this picture, which is the AVI file, which is like roughly around 1.7 gigabytes. By the way, if you are all interested, I don't mind sharing this data. So I'm actually uploading it to my Google Drive, and if and I leave the link in the below uh, of the video description so you guys can download it. Okay, and let's get started. So this is the picture, this is the video file. So you need to download a software called AutoStacker. And if you download and open, you get a file like this, right? There is a window here on the right, and then there is a kind of options over here. You can actually drag multiple files from here same time, but rather than making this tutorial way too advanced, I would just drag one file at a time, okay? So you take this, you can open and do that one as well. It doesn't matter how you do it. But if you do that, you get that one file, one of one, and you see the picture on the right side, okay? One of the things that you need to do is, on the right side, go through the frames and keep going, like basically, it has 3600 frames. So when you are looking at these frames, you know like, you know, the atmosphere is moving and maybe one frame is better than the other. You don't know which one is better, but if you wait and do it slowly, you will start seeing Whenever you stop in some places, you think that you got it right. Okay, so it's okay to select the one that is kind of enough details, right? So I'm still browsing through to see if I can find a good one. I'm moving rather faster, but I'll try to move slow. Yeah, you wanted it to be round the planet, not like bouncy, right? Uh, but generally, like this one is pretty good, not good enough, then find something else, right? Look at something that is decent with all the data that you wanted it. I wanted to stay here at this level, okay? This is kind of what I wanted to see. A bit of, um, yeah, I'm, I'm not able to make up my mind. But yeah, I'll, I'll take this one, all right? So now you see the image size is 800 by 600. That is the resolution at which that I took a picture. Notice that 
in the video file when I was showing you earlier, the picture is black and white, but here it is showing color, right? So in the color options here, I left it as auto detect. So now the color is coming up. Sometimes you have to force to RGB or RGGB, one of those. But generally, if everything is correct and if you did capture it on uh, right, generally auto stack it will automatically detect the color. Okay. Now, on the left hand side, I left it as planet, dynamic background, gradient, noise robust as four, local, and you could actually go multiple steps like analyze and stack. But generally, the way I look at it is this picture here generally is okay. So if it is generally okay, you can, let's say, at least every other frame or, you know, at least one frame out of three frames, the frames are coming okay. So you can decide what would be the best number. Like I would put at least 50 above for this level. But if you are a little concerned, you can also try maybe like 36 or, or 38 or 58. I'm just putting some different numbers so that it creates them in separate folders. Selected RGB align. I didn't want to select the drizzle. Auto size is quality based. And I selected TIFF as the file format that it has to create after it does the stacking. Now, on the right side, you could zoom in and out of this image. That's one of the options that you can do. If you wanted to see them all, you can see it. And then you can manually select. You can manually select the frames here, but I would prefer leaving that to 24. Some people suggested me 48, but I like 24. And I put max brightness as 20, based on the brightness. And let's say if you click place the AP grid, the alignment points, the APs are going to place automatically. And they look pretty good, good enough that I don't need to. If you are worried, in some cases you might need to turn on this close to edge, but I have not seen trouble with place AP grid so far. It works okay. And now you click on the stack. Generally people select analyze and then they will select the right percentage, but you can do eyeball. I put 56 and I put 38 and I think that will 58 and 38. I think that will pretty much do the job. If it is not, then when it analyzes it, you can actually look at the graph, the quality graph and decide. I would leave that to the system. And usually when you are processing several videos, you don't want to like, you know, deeply analyze every one of them. Eyeballing it is generally good enough to get the idea, but this numbers will help you because you wanted to go maybe a bit lower or maybe a bit higher frames in terms of stacking. And if you click on stack, this will take some time, depends on the computer and the number of frames and all that stuff. But once it all completes, it saves the images in these two folders. Okay. So I'm going to come back once this process is done. Okay. Now it is done. It completed the image stacking. And it must have placed these files in these folders. All right. Here are the directories the 38 and the 58. So we can actually look up the image. So this is the 38 one. Let me minimize this. So this is the 38 option. And look, let's look at the, sorry, 58. And let's look at the 38 one as well. So this is the 38 one. So if I compare these two, whichever one has more details is the one that you would like to select, right? So when you come here, 
I don't know. I started liking the 38 one. Yeah, this one has. It's hard to tell, honestly, which one has more details. I'm just eyeballing it and uh, I see the black, more black here than here. So, but here it is a bit sharper in this side versus here. I would go with the 58 for now. It's not much of a difference, but uh, it's your choice. You can make the choice. I'm seeing the resolution and the sharpness is better here for the ice caps. Then here, this one is a little bit not sharp. So I would go with this. Okay. So this is the one that I'm going ahead with. So if you go back to the directory it created, this is the image that we are working with. Okay. So step number two, once the auto stacker process is complete, you can actually close auto stacker and then open another program called Registacks. So Registacks is a free software as well. Both auto stacker and Registack, Registacks are free software. I forgot to mention that earlier. So this one, when you open, you could actually take this image, the one that you got, drag it over here and you have multiple wavelet settings here and multiple functions here. Okay. So one of the things that you can do is you can make changes to here. Okay. So when you increase the sharpness here, you will see a lot more details here. Let me show you what I mean. Let's say if I put like maybe three and if I drag this over to the right, you will start seeing fabulous details, right? At the same time, it does create a lot of noise. So you may want it to reduce the noise uh, like you know, 40% noise reduction. So let me show you what I mean by noise reduction. If I click on view zoomed, this is what it is. So if I didn't turn on the noise, it's like this, right? But if I did turn on the noise, it becomes less grainy. But of course, it loses some of the sharpness and details but definitely it improves the noise, right? So this is the image that you are going to get. You can do that at multiple layers. I went to the lowest la level layer, but you can change these and play around with it forever. So I have multiple settings here, like the ones that I always use. So I will, for these ones, you can save these once you got, a, got an idea which one is better, click on save scheme, so you can load them up. So I'll usually try from the top. I'll play with each one of them. So this one is, I'll, I'll, I'll show you guys each one of them. And you can pause the video if you are feeling something that you wanted to use. These are the settings that are changing for each one of them. I like the third one better, but I'll see. Oh, this is too much. We don't want to use four, number four for sure. It's too light. Too much. Too much. It's okay. Let me see the difference between this last one and the third one. Third one is making it better. Okay. So it is doing like 0.12 sharpening all the way and 0.18. And this deserves a little bit more sharpening if we wanted to get a bit more details. So I will go and bump up this to 18. 
to get a bit more detail. Okay, I don't want to go way too much. I'm just matching that to the sharpening on the left, on the denoise on the left. Because I have quite a bit of details, I think it is getting less grainy. So I'll stick to the lower layers. I think this is almost pretty close. So even this guy, for this layer, I will just reduce it a little bit. I don't want to overdo it because you might get artifacts if you overdo it. I think if you stay at that level, I think it may be okay. It's very natural looking. When you zoom in, it's pretty good. You don't want, like if you use the control, you can move this around and see if you are going to create. If you start seeing any stacking lines on the image, that's when you know like you are overdoing it. But right now, I don't see any stacking lines. I'm okay for now, right? There is a little bit of color correction that we may have to do on this one. For that, click on the RGB align. And there is a alignment box here. So what you need to do is, you can highlight this. Okay, and put it in the view zoomed so that you actually can see it, what is going on, and click on Estimate. This actually does the RGB align fairly well. I really like the way it does. Sometimes your, your ADC, if you don't have an ADC, this one actually makes Pretty good estimation. If it is showing some numbers here, then it gets a bit more complex. Then you need to fix for those. Like you, need, you can manually move that up and down. But if it doesn't show any numbers here, you don't need to use this manual option at all. Okay. So some people, rather than doing an estimate, they would actually move this around to make any corrections. I would prefer leaving it estimate. And if it is showing zero, I would just ignore it. I'll leave it at that point. Okay. Now, I wanted to go and do RGB balance now. Okay. So here you can actually move the sliders, red, green, blue. Like for example, if you do like this, you get that color in the back. If you do this, it's too much green is showing up. Right. And if you, um, Put it in the middle, it is, this is where it was. So if it is like, you know, if you want to put more color, like red into it, you actually get a bit more red because it is mass. But what I would prefer is, I don't want to mess around with this, and I will click on auto balance. Auto balance is the best way to go, because you don't want to change colors with this program. I would prefer like a Photoshop and change the saturation there rather than making any changes at this particular point, right? So I'll leave it at that. I think this will give you a fairly good image for that standpoint. But remember, all we did was we used these settings. The sliders are right to move to the right. Make sure because there are zeros in the beginning. But if you do save it once, this will come up automatically. Okay. Now, this is not the end of it. Like what you need to do is you need to save. And when it saves it, it will tell you this. You have not used the do all function. Do all is nothing but do this, uh, do the RGB, do the balance, right? So press yes. And it takes your old image and converts that from old image to a new image, which generally I will call it for YouTube. Okay, I'll remember that. Usually I'll put like underscore V2, but for me, I, I must have processed this already. So I'm just putting a different name for this file. I don't want to overwrite my stacked image because if I learn a better way of doing it, 
I can come back rather than stacking again, right? And I save that image. Okay, and then you can close this program. So the next one that I would do is I would go to Adobe Photoshop. And I'm assuming most of you use Photoshop. If you are advanced, you can go to Pixinsight, but I think I'm showing you with Photoshop because most of us are using. Uh, you don't need to buy the entire Photoshop license. Now they have a cloud license version, so you can use that if you are interested. Uh, but I use the cloud version of it and that will do a pretty good job. You can do this in Lightroom if you are very familiar with it. All I'm doing here is uh, I'll show you a couple of steps. So I'll put it in this image, the new image that is coming through. I prefer dragging it rather than second guessing. So let me see. This is my Y2 image. And I'll put it here. All right. So now the image is loaded here. The first thing that I would do is I will try to go to image adjustments and levels. If the levels is showing something like this, there isn't much we can do. I mean, if you can see, if you move the levels down a little bit, it gets a little darker. Okay. So you can go, this is the maximum level I would go to. I wouldn't go beyond this. Okay. But I would stay a little bit to the left because I don't want to make it like too dark. All you are trying to do is uh, make it a little bit darker regions, a bit more dark. That's all you are doing when you are making, when you are moving to the right. If you go to the history, if you see the open, it's too bright. Probably I was taking when the moon is on and I'm just making it a bit darker so that the background is going to come up, right? And that's where I would want it to stay here on the levels. I don't want to go to curves adjustments at all. If you do go into curves, you're going to change the image and that's not my personal taste. And if you go to sharpen in the filter, there is something called smart sharpen. So these are my settings here and already you can see the amount I prefer to use is like 224. Radius is like 3.8. Reduce noise is like 39%. If you have a better way, uh, please feel free. And if you click OK, let me show you by zooming in this one. Okay. So this is what it is right now. This is what it was before, right? Can see that. Maybe the smart sharpen is a bit more than what I expect because I don't want to see the it just gets bright. So I would tone down a little bit. Let me go back to the smart sharpen filter sharpen smart sharpen and here I would reduce the amount a bit more drastic and now I think I'm seeing lesser of that issue right so this is uh, this is pretty good good enough okay and then the next thing that I would do is I would go to the filter and uh, camera raw filter And things that I would generally do is increase the saturation slightly higher, um, gives a bit more color, vibrance, not too much, maybe a little bit better, right? I change the temperature. So if you go all the way, you can see the temperature changing, right? So I would change it to somewhere here, but you lose the darkness of it when you increase the temperature. but you do want it somewhere here or here. So 
it's personal choice this will put a bit more color into it but i don't want to overdo it right so just increase a little so that at least people recognize this is mars not moon right so that's all i would do just make it make the tint higher a little bit and that's pretty much what you need to do i don't think you wanted to do anything else uh this is basically the image that you got when you started here by doing these steps you got this image so from here you move to this image just by making sure that you change the shadows and all that stuff so now you got a pretty good image of mars here uh, i would save this as the same file uh with an extension of uh, maybe this is photoshopped so i would put it as ps and okay and also i will export this as a gif file as a jpeg file sorry so change it to jpeg it does a pretty good job exporting it to jpeg and it will save right here so now if you go back to the same directory that's my background desktop background so okay so if i go to this directory i have a photoshop file here which is what i have here so so this is the file yeah it looks good i don't know every time i process it the image change a little bit so there is no science behind it honestly other than following those steps uh, but let's not overdo it when you are doing it i think if you stay at a decent level i think uh, you get a pretty good job so if you open this image so this is where we started with the avi file with the video file and that's what the mars image that you are going to get i hope this tutorial is helpful for the coming up mars opposition there could be lot of better ways to process than how i processed it so i'll share my data with you all and you can follow this process or make improvements to this process but if i did make any mistakes please do let me know i will also correct on my side if there is a better image that you are getting or you, even if you are getting a an image that looks like this or even worse uh, do tag me in those images and let me know when you are using my data uh, i am on instagram uh, youtube facebook uh, and twitter so you can tag me anywhere wherever you are posting that would be very helpful thank you all for watching if you are new to this channel and if you do like this video please feel free to subscribe to my channel and uh, click on the like button thank you all